everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great kickoff to your week. Uh, for those of you in the U.S. who uh, celebrated the extended weekend for Labor Day, hope you are adjusting uh, and getting back to the swing of things and getting things moving. I uh, hope that over the course of the last week or so, uh, things have gone the way you've planned, but we both know that that's not always the case. Uh, that's why I consistently remind everyone that no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult things are, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, look, I'm not going to be long today. Uh, I, I just want to touch on something that I hope will help uh, those who watch uh, this video, whether it be during the live stream or um, on a replay somewhere on one of the uh, platforms on which it will be shared, or if someone else takes it and shares it because I leave my content in Creative Commons so people can take it and share it and repurpose it and use it so that it can help other people. That's one of the ways that we are working to reach uh, as many people as possible. Uh, so you won't get any copyright hits for taking the work and sharing it with other people on your platform uh, in whatever way you see fit. Um, so that's that. I also want to remind those who are watching that if you're at a point right now where you are really uh, aware of the fact that you need to change things, that there's something about your life that needs to change in order for you to really truly answer the conviction of your calling, of the conviction of your destiny, of the conviction of this yearning on the inside of you to uh, execute greatness, to execute impact, to execute something that you're going to be able to leave uh, other people. Um, we are still doing the 30 day holistic uh, transformation uh, challenge and each person. Uh, this is a unique individual experience that you will be working out with me over the course of 30 days. Uh, while we call it, of course, it's really a one on one thing. Uh, you don't have to share that space or time with anyone else. Uh, the link to enroll is in the description box and we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. Uh, one of the things that I talk about, probably if you monitor me and you followed me for any time, I've been doing this for 30 years, but if you monitor me for any time over the last 10, 12 years here on social media, you're going to find a common theme. Number one, start your day right. And the best way to start your day right is with gratitude. That has been a common thing with me. I believe in it. I live it. Every day I wake up, the first thing I do before I put my feet on the ground is I establish three reasons to be grateful. I am. A, what, am what am I doing when I do that? I am establishing a mental and emotional state that opens me up to the positive uh, realm. It raises my frequency and vibration at the energy level that I'm functioning at. And we know that energy is resonant. So energy tends to attract like energy. So if I wake up and I'm down, I'm frustrated, I'm stressed, I'm thinking about all the things that's going to happen during the day, then I'm at a lower frequency and it opens me up to a lot of more uh, low frequency energy. I call them low frequency energy assaults where a lot of people are at and it's a bunch of energy going around, nothing good happening. But you wake up in a bad mood. You wake up with a, with a lot of stress. You wake up with a bunch of things going on and you open yourself up to, to more. It doesn't mean that being in a positive state or having a mindset of gratitude means that you're never going to encounter challenges. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be uh, a certain number of disruptions and setbacks and all these things that happen. It just means that when you're in the right frame of mind, you perceive them differently, you see them differently, and you approach and confront them differently. When you sit up and you coming in from a negative perspective, you come in as a victim, you come in at the mercy of what's going to happen to you today. But when you come in with gratitude, gratitude tends to shape the entire way you look at the world. And I'm going to talk to you about that. But I want to first plant a seed uh, that I'm going to cultivate through the course of this encounter. 
Uh, and again, this isn't going to be that long, but I want to plant a seed that I'm going to cultivate. And the seed is this, that your life is simply a printout of the program that your subconscious is running. Your subconscious literally controls 96% of the outcomes in your life, 96% of the decisions, 96% of the behaviors. You operate on a default program run by your subconscious. And the thing is, if you want to change the outcome, you're going to have to change the programming. The beautiful thing is that you can change the programming, that you can literally download new data, new software, new ways of thinking, new belief systems that will literally change the program that's being run on autopilot. And when you change the program, you change the outcome. But you are literally living the printout of what's going on in your subconscious. Your, your behaviors are reflective of your beliefs. Every limitation is associated with a limiting belief. Every way that you look at things is determining your perception. That's why we say perception is reality. Why? Because it doesn't have to be real for you to respond to it as if it's real. If you believe that if you are going on, I'm, I'm sitting in my office, so I'm looking at the door. If I believe on the other side of that door, there's a person, if I literally believe there's a person on the other side of that door that wants to kill me, do you know the stress levels that I create in my, in my, in, in my body just by thinking it? And then they elevate the closer I get to opening that door. Now, it doesn't have to be a person on the other side for that to happen. That's the issue with the human brain, the neocortex of the brain, which is responsible for uh, the high levels of thinking. It's the newest part of the brain. It uh, is responsible for executive functioning, uh, you know, and uh, and so when you when you when you sit up it, our neocortex is so huge that literally we can trigger emotional realities just by thinking about them. That's how you can recall something and get emotional about it, whether it's good or bad. You might get happy, you might be sad, whatever. Just the thought alone triggers things. That's okay in situations where your thought processes are triggering positive results. But what happens when you recall negative things? What happens when you invent or imagine negative things? 60% of what we worry about over the course of the day never, ever happens. I mean, never. That's a lot of energy invested in something that never takes place. But we trained ourselves to worry about things instead of trusting the process of investing in oneself to have solutions. See, uh, having a heart of gratitude, having a heart of thankfulness, having a positive mindset and anticipating things does not eliminate the challenges in life. That's not what we're talking about. We're not in some delusional uh, state of mind. What we're, but what you're in that positive, what we've learned is in the right state of mind, you see things differently, you approach them different. See, if you're in a low state of mind, the, the thing that you see is not a challenge, it's a problem. It's a problem because you see it as bigger than you. It's a problem because you don't see the solution. It's a problem because you are now fearful of it. But when you are in the right state of, state of mind, every challenge is simply that. It's a puzzle meant to be solved, meaning that the answer to the puzzle is present. You simply have to find it. There's no such thing as no solution. Every problem has one. And that state of mind alone changes how you see things over the course of the day. So in essence, if you want to change the printout, you got to change the program. Your life is the printout of the program your sub subconscious is running. And if you want to change the printout, you have to change the program. And so that's what I do with my clients. Uh, a big part of what I do with my clients is just simply rewriting the program. It's rewriting the program that you're running and it's doing it in a way that it sticks. Now, uh, something that baffles me, blows my mind, but I know it to be true because the data just is that prevalent, is that with the vast majority of people in the world, they spend 70% of their time in a state of stress. Now, the, body, the human body is... The human body, brain, mind, the entire the entire physiolo physiological makeup of the brain, of the body is designed to manage a certain level of stress, and stress has a purpose. You 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 trigger a stress response when something when there's a threat. That's the pre uh, the uh, the ancient. Uh, 
response that that was responsible for human survival. You walk out of the cave and there's a predator. The hair on your neck stands up. You realize there now I have to fight or I have to hunt, whatever it is. There's a predator. My life is in danger. Now I can either pull out my spear, my rock or whatever it is I'm fighting with back then. And I can fight this predator or I can flee. And we call it the fight or flight response but it's a stress response what happens in the stress response well a couple of things happen your heart rate increases the body releases cortisol which is a stress hormone adrenaline which is a stress hormone both are meant to increase the physiological capacity to respond to the threat another thing that happens is the body shuts down any part of the the, the physiological uh makeup of the body that doesn't isn't required to physio physically respond to the threat. One of the biggest users of blood and oxygen is the prefrontal cortex, which is part of now what we know to be the neo, uh, uh, a part of the neocortex. So the prefrontal cortex requires about 30% of the body's oxygen flow when it's functioning. Well, the body shuts that down during stress. Why? Because don't need to be doing calculations and all that when you're trying to run. You just need to know where you're running and you run. So I need all of that to go to my extremities. I need that that oxygen and that blood to flow to my extremities. So now you have a stress response. And it, it makes perfectly good sense in the sense where there's a predator. See, this is what I call my predator, uh, the predator versus the coworker an, uh, analogy. And I'm getting to, so when there's a predator, the stress response makes perfectly good sense, right? Here's the problem. Very rarely are ne not very rarely are we now walking outside of our doors and there's a predator waiting on us. Now, some of us live in communities where that may be the case, but for as the most part, you're not walking out of your door expecting there to be something on the other side of your door that could kill you. Now, the reality of it is there's always that possibility, but the risks are not high. So, you know, what what what, what why are people in stress all the time? Well, see, now it's not so much the predator that cre creates the stress. It's how we feel about our coworker who we sit next to or who's in the cubicle right next to us or three cubicles down or our manager, which is in the office and we constantly see throughout the day. So now I'm in a constant state of stress the entire time I'm at work. Matter of fact, I'm now stressing on the way to work because I know I have to deal with that person. Now, that's a constant state of stress. Now, what we know is cortisol is great two or three minutes into the body. Adrenaline is great two or three minutes in the body. Having an elevated heart rate and all this. But here's the problem. It's twofold. First of all, physiologically, cortisol in the body for too long starts to break the body down. Cortisol in the body on a chronic state literally starts to tear down and destroy the organs. Long-term effects, heart disease, arterial disease, kidney failure, liver failure, and a bunch of other things. That's that's just having cortisol in the body on a re regular basis. Something that you've heard a million times, chronic uh, stress, and didn't realize just how dangerous it was. That's one side of it. The second side of it is when you're in fight or flight, which is a part of the stress response, your prefrontal cortex is not operating optimally. What does that mean? The very problem that you are sitting up and facing, you don't have the intellectual capacity to solve it because you shut that part of the brain down. So now you're in this cycle of hating a reality that you don't have the capacity to change because you're in a constant state of stress. Now, two of the most powerful emotions when it comes to creating stress is fear and anger. Highly destructive, very, very devastating to your physiological health, heart, arterial health, kidney, all that stuff I just mentioned. But fear and anger, and it, it's so prevalent in today's society. That's why I keep pushing starting your day on time, starting your day on the right note, priming to put yourself in the right mental and emotional state. And the best way to start that is gratitude. Why? It is absolutely impossible to be in a state of gratitude and be fearful. It is equally impossible to be in a state of gratitude and be angry. Try it. Have an authentic and genuine gratitude experience and be angry. 
You can't be grateful and angry. At you can't be grateful and fearful at the same time. The gratitude opens up the gate of abundance. Gratitude is a reminder that no matter what you're facing, you have everything in the front of you and everything necessary to overcome it. Gratitude says that there is still more to come. Gratitude says that that whatever you have now can be multiplied. Gratitude is the place where the gateway to abundance exists. You cannot get to abundance without first being grateful. One of the biggest problems people have is they can only find what's wrong. They constantly focus on what's wrong. They never ever get to a point of seeing how things can change because they're so focused on what, guess what happens when, when you focus on something? Whatever you focus on, you feel. So if I focus on the problem, guess what? The problem becomes uh, emphatic. The problem becomes larger than it really is. When I focus on the problem, the problem becomes exacerbated. A bunch of you are having trouble in your relationships because you're focusing on the problems instead of seeking the solutions, instead of being grateful for the things that are right in the relationship. Some of you are struggling in your business because you're focusing on the problem instead of magnifying and amplifying the things that are working and then understanding that you have the ability and the capacity to find the solution to the problem. The problems have become so big that you don't see an answer. So now they are simply magnifying themselves and you don't see a way out. It's about perception. It's about how you start your day. It's about sitting up. See, when I start my day, I'm not getting up thinking that, man, I'm going to get through this day and I'm not going to have one challenge. I'm going to get through this day and all of my clients are going to be on their A game. I'm going to get through this day and I'm not going to have one person with a complaint coming to me about something. I'm going to get through this day and I'm not going to have any problems with revenue. I'm not going to have any problems with expansion and scaling. I'm not going to have any problems with all the things I'm responsible for in the businesses that I run. And then I'm not going to have any problems with the one with not one of the 13 children I have. Not going to have any problems with any of the nine grandchildren I have. I'm just not going to have any problem. I'm gonna wake up. It's going to be no. I wake up knowing because my day, because my life is full of activity. Because I made it that way. I am giving life everything I've got. I'm not going to go to the grave having half did what I came here to do. So I'm going to wake up every day. And so I've taken on the challenges of life. I've lived life to the fullest intent. I've had some unbelievable times. I've had some great challenges and I've had some devastating moments. But I can leave this life knowing that I gave it everything I've got. I can die on E. And that's all I'm living for is to not take anything that I should have put into motion to the grave with me. But because of that, I also know that there's no way in the world that everything I have on the table is going to run smoothly every day. So then what do I do? Do I get up stressing? What's going to happen today? Oh, my God. What's going to go wrong today? Ooh, man, I don't want to get out of here because I know as soon as I hit that office, this is going to happen. As soon as that phone rings, oh, my God, who is that? No. I don't wake up with a mindset of thinking that everything's going to go right. So when it starts to go wrong, I lose it. I wake up knowing challenges are coming, but I'm built for this. Challenges are coming, but there is always an answer and a way to, to, to maneuver and manage the challenge. The challenge is never greater than my destiny. The challenge is never greater than my capacity. The challenge is never greater than my calling. I know why I'm here. That's the thing that you've got to understand is that you have to rewrite the program so that you are not shaken, that you don't become frenetic and unglued, that you don't become overwhelmed by things that you are built to overcome. It's all about rewriting the program. If you're stressed out all the time, if it seems that you can't ever get over the hump and whatever it is, there's something in the programming. The programming is giving you something that is producing the results that is. Whatever it is, it's going to be associated with a belief. And the belief is going to create a pattern of thoughts. And the pattern of thoughts is going to create a pattern of behavior. And the pattern of behavior is going to create a pattern of results. You are looking at the printout of your beliefs that produce thoughts, that produce behavior, that give you the printout, or you can call them results. So what are you going to do? You're going to have to change the programming. You're going to have to visit the belief systems that have cornered you and put you in a place where you feel helpless. 
You're going to have to look at the view at, 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 at these different viewpoints and beliefs and expose yourself to the possibility that there's something greater on the inside of you. Expose yourself to the possibility that there's far more inside of me than what I have been giving life and what I have been giving the world and what I have been giving my spouse and what I have been giving my family. There's so much more. And it doesn't have to be this exhausting experience. When you are truly living in the presence of who you are, it's fulfilling more than it's exhausting. Yeah, it takes something from you, but that's that's a part of the process. You, you give life everything you have, and then you go to bed seven, eight hours, and you replenish, you rejuvenate. And in many instances, when you know how to manage the your, your, your wind down and you go to sleep with the positive thoughts, a lot of the answers will come to you in the deepest, most subconscious moments while you're asleep. Do you realize that the periodic table through which we now reference chemistry came to that person in their dream. And that's just one, so many of the adventures we enjoy right now came in dreams, why? Because of the right mindset, the right state, the right openness. Instead of having nightmares, you, you're having imaginative uh, interventions in which you are seeing answers to the problems that are out there. Set your mind to work for you. Your mind is the most powerful thing that you will ever possess. It can be an enemy, or an asset. That's going to be completely up to you. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said at the beginning, if you're looking to make a change, one of the quickest and most value uh, rich ways to do it is through our um, 30 day holistic transformation uh, encounter. And the link is in the box. Check that out. If you should, if you're really truly serious about it, check it out it's probably at this particular point in time almost certain the most affordable way to sit in front of me uh and you get four sessions a uniquely designed program we touch the most important thing to you at this moment and we get we show how we take the first steps to get there there's absolutely nothing that can be withheld from you when you truly know who you are, when you truly set the course of your life, when you know how to wake up every morning and create gratitude. And whatever you do, people, leave this thing alone for at least the first 30 minutes of your day. With me, it's almost roughly about an hour. I don't touch it. You know what happens when you pick this thing up first thing in the morning? Those who follow me know. You surrender your personal sovereignty. You know what your personal sovereignty is? It's the capacity to set your day. It's the capacity to establish how you are going to approach your day. When you pick this up and it's the first thing you pick up and you haven't already established in your mind who you are, how you're going to handle all the rough things and the challenges of the day and you pick this up and the wrong thing is on it, that goes your day. You started off and now you're trying to recover. The first half of your day is just recovering from what you saw on this thing. It's so addictive. And it can be so destructive. Now, in the right state of mind, it's an unbelievable tool. Just like the brain. In the wrong state of mind, it will finish you. Just something to think about. Don't forget, click that link. Join uh, I'll contact you or the support team will contact you to schedule your initial session and we'll get it underway. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Thank you guys for stopping in. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out. <laughs>